Do you think, Sanjeev, that the issue could be far worse for Indian markets considering the fact that we've had such heavy redemptions, barely any inflows coming into our markets from domestic investors? Well, it's definitely going to be a challenge because in the next few months, uh, you know, uh, if emerging markets are not the flavor, uh, then you would definitely see either lower amount of money coming in as far as emerging markets are concerned or maybe money even going out, which is the worst case scenario. And unfortunately, that's what we have seen in the last uh, few weeks. Uh, and unfortunately, India does not have too much of defense against a sudden outflow of money uh, in the sense uh, we run a structural current account deficit uh, that's in the range of around $7 billion uh, per month. So effectively, every month we have to get somewhere about uh, $7 billion of inflows, uh, capital inflows in the form of equity, debt, uh, FDI, bank credit, NRI deposits, whatever it may be. And for that, you have to have the right investment climate. Uh, you know, uh, as long as globally people were not too much worried about the cost of equity, given the fact that, you know, you had pretty much uh, zero interest rate regimes in many parts of the world. I mean, that was fine. But once interest rates start moving in the rest of the world, then it becomes a big challenge for getting money into India. And until we start being more attractive to overseas investors, unfortunately, what we are uh, looking at is the next six months of fair amount of political uncertainty, maybe some amount of slowdown in reforms, etc., which is definitely not a case for a lot of money coming into India. So I think it is imperative that the government address some of these issues once and for all. You know, one thing is, you know, how do you try and curtail coal consumption so that you at least you start with a lower amount of current account deficit every month. You know, instead of seven, let's bring it down to five. Uh, you know, it's, it's a much more manageable uh, problem in that case. The second issue is uh, the government is looking at a big divestment program. I mean, do we really need to do it at this point in time? The other option is whether we can use the cash, which a lot of this cash which PSO is sitting on, and use that to meet the fiscal deficit uh, uh, targets rather than, you know, do a divestment uh, at a time when anyway interest levels are low in India. Uh, government divestment will act as a big overhang and result in, you know, uh, effectively money being sucked out of the market. Uh, I mean, let's look at a theoretical example of uh, Coal India. This company sits on 750 billion rupees of cash. In the last four years, the total capex, cumulative capex is 85 billion rupees. Last two years, per annum, this company has generated free cash flow of 220 billion rupees. I mean, clearly it does not require that much of amount of cash in the balance sheets. Look at the government of India's uh, divestment target that is about 400 billion rupees in a normal divestment another 150 billion rupees from you know for either the Suti owned companies or Hindustan Singh, Balco etc. I think it should be fairly easy for the government of India to simply ask for a check of 40,000 crores from Coal India in the story and you get divestment program done in one shot no need to you know go to the market you know depress the value of uh, Government owned companies, you know, create a big overhang on the market, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's the second situation, second issue which the government can look at if it wants to, you know, address the problem of sentiment. Third issue is on all policy related matters, can we expedite issues? For example, the gas price issue has been pending for a fairly long time. You know, I, I think it's in everybody's interest to have higher prices ultimately <coughs> if India needs to have investment. I think market forces work best and at some point in time we have to have higher prices. I, I don't think there's any issue about it. So why don't we do it sooner than later? You know, there's been already so much a debate between various uh, ministries. Uh, but at some point in time you have to take a decision on that. Same we look at the uh, oil subsidy issue. You know, there is still no clarity on the subsidy sharing mechanism for 2000. I mean, it's anyway too early for that, but it wouldn't hurt the sentiment in that sector to have a subsidy sharing arrangement announced at the beginning of the year. You know, 60, 40, 55, 45, whatever the share the whole government wants between the government and the upstream companies can be put forth in writing at the beginning of the year, and that's it, you know. And people know what they're dealing with rather than, you know, waking up every day and figuring out, oh my God, you know, what are the only numbers of this company. So, you know, obviously it's difficult to tackle the structural uh, issues in the short term. Uh, there have been some attempts made to address those, but there are other ways of, you know, uh, doing some of these things in a more smarter way, so so that, you know, at least we address some of these issues in the short term, you know, whatever little emanation the government of India has, and you know, use that to improve the sentiment in the country, uh, and, you know, quell the sense of panic which is there in the markets, in the, bond, in the currency markets and in the equity market.